Hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for watching and it's back into the underhive with this video I'm going to paint up the Bounty Hunter Yolanda Scorn. It's been a long time since I've painted a single miniature uh, but it was really interesting to do this and step away from painting big bulky units for a change. So there's the finished article, let's crack on and show you what I did. So I've started off like a lot of my Necromunda figures and a lot of my figures all together lately. Black undercoat, lead belt spray over the top, saves a lot of time painting metal. One thing to be aware of though, you've got to be super careful not to get any base colours you use onto the metallic areas that you want to keep metallic later, because otherwise you're negating the time saving effects. So I'm starting off with a nice deep red for the trousers um, and the kind of knee pad area. Very traditional Escher kind of colours, the reds, the yellows, and I wanted to kind of echo that because she is an ex Escher gang member that's been kicked out and now she's you know working as a bounty hunter. So I wanted to keep those links to my Escher gang. So I'm working on a yellow now onto the armour panels. So the knee panel, we're going to do some extra work on that later. Onto the chest plate and the back plate. Now yellow, because it's it's not a very strong colour, you will need to do a couple of layers, especially if you've put it onto a wet palette like I have or watered the paint now, which is always something you should do. So a couple of layers. The beauty of starting with a metallic base coat is if you miss anything and you're painting armour panels, it doesn't matter, it shows through as damaged armour later. Now I'm using a kind of pale brown onto the um, cloth running down from the front there and I am using the same brown as what I painted my Escher skins with so if you've watched that video you'll see it linking together but what I'm not going to do is paint the animal stripes on uh, if you want to see that you can check out my Escher video because I want to have links to my Escher gang but I don't want her to look identical now we're taking an off-white and a bone white colour and using this on a lot of the cloth around the model so the kind of face veil that is covering the scars that she apparently has uh, in her background so she's wearing that face veil i'm also going to paint this onto the hair and things as well as a starter base coat to build up those hair colors and you can see here now we've done the bone color on the hair and now i'm just going to go over with an off-white so it's not quite a white color it's slightly off-white um over where we've put that bone white over the hair to build up a couple of layers lighten up the hair for what we're going to do with it later on there's not an awful lot of flesh on this model she is quite covered but she's using a pale flesh color on those areas of flesh that are showing and again just be super careful when you're going around if you're painting this model or any issue if you're using the techniques i'm showing because you know if you get this paint over the metallic areas you need to tidy that up or else the point of doing the metallic base coat is kind of ruined um, so into the face there and again you can use a thinner brush to be honest here i'm painting with a size two brush that I've painted the rest of the model with as long as you're careful with the amount of paint you put on the end of that brush there's no need to drop to a smaller brush I do do it occasionally through the paint scheme and drop to a smaller brush but generally you can get away with using a size two as I have through this whole thing as long as you're careful so I mentioned before about matching her in many ways to my Escher gang so I'm now moving on to do the leather pouches and things which is a color I've used before um, any color I do use again I'll put in the description down below so you can follow along exactly so we are going to match a lot of these colors to my Escher gang but what we're going to do is a wash layer and some things later on that will make her stand out so theming it together but doing some difference to what we're going to um, pick out later so we've done the leather the belts the pouches that kind of thing and then just moving on to black for the boots um, and some of the other the other details now this is a lovely model to be painting it's been sat in my figure case for 18 months when i bought the set you get three models in the forge world set i needed the scum models to add on to my cordor gang didn't need the Land of Scorn model for anything because we were doing a Cordor campaign at the time. This was slightly pre-COVID and she's kind of sat there. But I wanted to take the opportunity after painting a number of bigger units and just really have a bit of fun. And that's what doing a single model sometimes can be because you can do different things that you wouldn't ordinarily try. Talking about that, something I don't do very often, although I do sometimes, is stripes. So I want to do the stripey knee pad. And you saw there I started off by using a slightly thinner brush and just literally painted the lines across, but holding it up and not having it on a fixed base was quite difficult to get the stripes. So change the camera angle. My hand is now resting on the table and just going really carefully with a nice thin brush. This is the first time I've used a thinner brush in this process. Watered down black paint and just build up those lines very, very carefully. Painting stripes on a small area like this is actually nowhere near as hard as you think. It is harder on a bigger area. So now once that's dried, I've done a wash with sepia wash. It's a Games Workshop wash, not the one I normally use and not the one that I washed the Escher from my original gang with. So it has given a totally different effect to the metal and the cloth on this model. So she is, does look quite visually different when I put her next to the two. Now we're gonna go back over. If you watched a lot of my videos, this is a traditional technique that I'll do. I'll do the wash stage and then use the exact same colors that I've already used and just go 
back over. So starting with the yellow, and what you want to do is paint it onto the raised areas away from the cracks and gaps where the wash has settled into to again give that visual depth. And you'll see if you look at the background, I'm using the exact same paints that I've put on the wet palette. And because I'm painting a single model, at this point I've maybe only done an hour and a half of painting actually on this model. All those colours are perfectly usable and it's a nice quick way of you know bashing out a model and feeling like you've got a bit of success. Sometimes cracking through a big unit of 10, 12 models can feel like it's taking an awfully long time. So going through the same colours you've already seen there, I've worked onto the red just in the raised areas, now onto the leather and again just knocking it on to the areas where the light would hit or putting it directly onto the edges you can see there on the pouch to do an edge highlighting. So I've got paint down the length of the bristles and you're just dragging it down that kind of join area where the two bits of cloth come together. Now if you notice there, there's a, an air bubble in this model, in the, which I'd never noticed when building it, just in the corner of that pouch, which a bit annoying that I didn't notice it when I was building it, I could have green stuffed it, but actually with it being Necromunda works out quite nicely for you know that kind of damaged equipment in the underhive. Now you can see here onto the face veil, which I painted with that bone white colour, just doing the same thing putting the paint on the edge of the bristles, running them down those raised areas, uh, you know, and up the, the front where the join in the nose would be with that cloth. And you can go super, super fine on it and you could just leave it on the raised areas itself like I'm doing there. But what I then do near the bottom of the cloth is with the similar amount of paint on the brush is just spread it out from that crack, you know, from the, from the ridge line, if that makes sense, on the nose and also at the bottom of the face veil just bringing it from maybe a couple of millimeters from where the face veil ends dragging some of that white down starting in the middle dragging it to the edge now the reason you start as i saw there from the kind of into the cloth and pull it to the edge is then it'll deposit more paint on the edge and it, it kind of smooths better not that kind of makes sense that's a strange description um, and then we're moving on to the hair same thing i said before we're doing the same two processes using the bone white and then the slightly more off-white colour down across the hair, building it up really slowly, pushing it onto the edges, and just gradually building until you feel happy. So don't use a great deal of paint, because if you do and put too much on at once, you can instantly ruin it. It's much better to go along and do four or five layers and strokes than it is to do one thick chunk of the white and you lose all the shading. Now what I've done is I've dug out um, like a Jean Steeler Purple, which is a layer paint. I'm not putting this onto the wet palette because I don't want this to water down. Because what I'm doing now is effectively dry brushing. So I've taken some of the paint out of the uh, pot direct, rubbed some of it off onto a bit of cloth to make sure there's not a lot of paint on my brush. And now I'm not quite dry brushing because I'm not battering left and right. I'm kind of edge highlighting, but with a dry brushing technique, putting very, very, very small amounts of this purple colour onto the hair, letting it build up again until I'm happy that the hair looks kind of pinky purple dyed, but still showing the white and the bone through uh, in the hair. So although I am a massive fan of wet palettes, sometimes they're not brilliant for everything and you just want to, you know, take your time and use a slightly different technique. Wouldn't necessarily do that if I was painting, say, 15 models at once, because your paint will end up drying up when you've got the pot open. And, but paint a single model, it's worth trying some different bits. Now going back to the really small brush, taking some tiny amounts of that black paint and just dotting it into the eyes there. Now I'm not going to go down to the level of actually painting the eyes properly and putting a white dot and that kind of thing on, because for me, just having the eyes black actually makes the face look quite effective. But what I do do now is take the flesh colour that we had originally, and again, doing the same highlighting technique as we're doing for the rest of the model, but just put some uh, slightly um, more vivid line down the nose and across the forehead. And then from now, really, it's doing what we've discussed already uh, on the other areas that we've not already touched. So working on that front cloth. Again, I don't do the animal patterns, but if you want to see me do animal patterns on cloth, that's in my original Escher video. So, you know, feel free to check that out. That's fine. Now, what I never do when I'm painting big units is really mix paints to do a highlighting stage. Reason being is if you mix it, you've got to then do the same mix for every model, and that can be really tricky. But painting on a single model gives you the opportunity to play with your paint, try something slightly different. So you saw there I've mixed a little bit of the black and the white together to make grey, and I've kept playing and thought, I quite like how that looks, and just highlighted the rips in her boots and things. So doing a single model gives you an opportunity to Try something you wouldn't necessarily ordinarily do, or I wouldn't anyway, because I, I don't like to mix when I'm doing big units, like I said. And then I've done exactly the same then, uh, moving on to um, that highlight layer, 
Now I'm moving on to the metal layer on it, and I'm not using a great amount, but what I'm doing is taking the similar metal color to what that base metal was, and just highlighting around the damages in her armor, because then that really you know brings those to life that little bit more. And now I did try and avoid painting on any metal area as I was doing the entire model, but it would have been a nightmare trying to paint the black around the studs on the arm. I did miss a few, but now it's just picking out those ones that I did actually get the black onto and just tidying it up. I did manage to actually miss the metal on most of the model, so that was absolutely fine. So I've tidied up on the studs on the glove, um, and now I'm taking it and dropping it across the knee pad to make the knee pad look like it's damaged metal. So I'm just painting a couple of stripes, a couple of lines, that's fine. And then taking that metal colour and on the chest plates where I maybe have missed um, things semi-deliberately when we were painting it to have the metal show under just highlighting those to show that this is battle damaged armor and other than just quickly brushing up the base that's you know the finished model I think it works really nicely I'm quite happy with it it was quite nice to do something different and paint a single model and she matches in quite nicely with the two scum models that I did paint 18 months ago um, so she matches in nicely as the set of three that's come from Forge World so I'll finish off with a shot of the set of three if you liked that like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. Hopefully I'll see you next time.